with your kids. Hola, Nihao, Konnichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Mahaba, Moni Muli Wanji, Namaste, Jambo, Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jeb Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We're coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so delighted that you're joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, Ghana, Himalaya, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, wherever you find your podcasts. Our guest today is our dean of all things, Stim and Steam, Jennifer Swanson, here to celebrate the secret science of sports. Before we invite the Admiral of Adventure into the studio, we want to invite you to an incredible sporting event. It's going to be a sporting event. It's happening September 18th in beautiful downtown Lowell, Massachusetts. It's the Lowell Kinetic Sculpture Race. And we are going to be there. The Reading With Your Kids podcast will be at the start and finish line for this incredible day of science and technology and fun. The, the Lowell Kinetic Sculpture Race is this event where people create their own Vehicles, they're human powered vehicles, and they race them in the water, in the mud, on the street, in the sand. I- I've never been to it. I've seen pictures. The creations of vehicles people are creating are wild. And we're going to be bringing some magic to it, and we would love for you to join us. It's all happening in beautiful downtown Lowell, Massachusetts, September 18th. The Lowell Kinetic Sculpture Race. Join us right now from Jacksonville in Florida. One of our favorite guests is back. She is the Admiral of Adventure, the Dean of all things STEM and STEAM, Jennifer Swanson. Hey, Jennifer. Hello, Hello Jed. How are you? I'm so excited to be back on your show. I'm really excited to have you back on the show, especially this week. The Olympics are starting in just a few days. And we are here to celebrate your brand new book, The Secret Science of Sports, followed by a really long subtitle. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So I will read it. Okay. It is The Secret Science of Sports, the math, physics, and mechanical engineering behind every grand slam, triple axel, and penalty penalty kick. Got that? I got it. All right. All right. Um, you know, this is great. This is right up my alley. Um... Being an athlete, I never, th- I never realized that when I was playing football, soccer to Americans, and <laughs> and I would line up to to send a pass to my friend who was running forward, one of my teammates, that I was actually in my head like doing some kind of calculus or physics to figure out what I needed to do to get the ball that was in front of my feet to where he was going to be in a few seconds. Oh. Yeah, it's all, it's all. So, so everyone, I know if, if you think science and STEM is not part of sports, we are here to tell you, you are wrong. Yeah. It is in everything you do. I mean, forces in motion. Um, yes, math, as you said, geometry, calculus, all that stuff. Um, the thing that, that I find interesting now is statistics. Can we talk about that for a minute? Oh, all the have stats. To. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I mean, when I was doing this book, I was asking my husband because he's, of course, he follows multiple sports and he could like name off all of these stats for all of these different players on different teams. And I was just a little intimidated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I remember growing up, um, you know, with walk living a mile away from Fenway Park would walk down there every weekend with the money that I made on my paper route and would go in and buy a program and had my little pencil and I would be uh, keeping score of the game, you know, and then doing the statistics. And I figured out, well, if they, if the Red Sox win and Detroit loses, that means the Sox are going to be here and they're going to be a half a game up. And it, it kind of makes my brain hurt thinking about it right now, but there it, it, it was a wonderful time of my life. 
Exactly. And I mean, so um, this book for me was kind of like a, a flashback to my childhood because I grew up with three brothers and a father who loved sports. So I played sports pretty much since I could walk. We had a basketball hoop in our driveway. So at night after dinner, we would play, you know, what, horse, or if we didn't have a lot of time, we'd play, I don't know, pig, you know, so whoever made it gets all the things. And then in the backyard, we had a big backyard. We would set up our own wiffle ball games. We had croquet. I played softball, swam. I mean, you name it. I did all of these sports and I still do them as an adult. So it was really cool to take my love of science and tie it into all of these awesome sports that everybody plays. Yeah. Now, you were mentioning something, and this is fascinating, and I actually spoke to a figure skater about it, and she explained a little bit, but of course, my brain isn't strong enough to absorb all that information, but I was always amazed at the figure skaters who would go into a spin. And it would start off at one speed, and then it would get faster, and they didn't seem to be moving anything. It was as if this, you know, force was making them spin faster and faster. And that's actually physics, right? That is physics, yeah. And the reason why they have to spin faster, because if you spin more slowly, then you will eventually come out of the spin more quickly, and that's probably not what you want to do. So what they do usually is they pull everything in very tightly, their arms, their legs, and they make themselves as small as possible. And that allows them to spin faster. And then when they want to slow down, you see them kind of put their arms out a little bit and move their legs. And that's all science. That's all science and physics. Yay. That's wild. You know, I'm I'm thinking, you know, with the Olympics, like I said, they're, they're starting in just a few days. What a great way to experience the the Olympics is, you know, not only appreciate the athletic competitions and, you know, and and the the achievements, but sitting down with our kids and talking about the STEM and the science that they're all watching and witnessing. Yeah, well, that's what we hope everybody does with this book, because we, it's split up into four different topics, as you and I have talked before, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. But it also talks about, like, food science. So how the athletes train their bodies by eating the proper foods and nutrition, how they, they exercise. You can, um, there's a lot of, you know, my books, there's tons of activities in this, right? So we teach you in here how to test your, your heart rate, your pulse, um, sitting versus standing versus running around and kind of give you the target heart rates. You can kind of see how the athletes trained for this, but also where I encourage you to go out and do stuff. So if you are sitting there watching, well, not for the, this Olympics. Um, well, actually, let's let's talk about baseball. I was going to say football, but let's talk about baseball. So if if you're watching baseball or tennis, which would be in there, go outside with a tennis racket and a ball and hit it at different angles. Mm. Right? Change the angle of your racket. If you if you turn your racket kind of up, then the ball is going to hit down towards the ground. If you flip it up towards the sky, it's going to go higher and longer and farther. And you can test all of these things in your backyard, you know, maybe during the commercials or something, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I love that too. When I was, was playing soccer in college and in, in high school and then coaching afterwards, I was always amazed at the different ways that you would kick the ball to make it bend. It would, you could, actually bend the ball and make you kick it one way and it spins and goes in a different direction. And that's fascinating. Yeah. We talk about that in the book here as you, since you're a soccer player, you know, it's all where your foot position is when you kick it. Mm -hmm. Um, And you can play around with that in the backyard. And I mean, you know, if you're a soccer player, oh my gosh, how many hours a day do you think you practice? There was a lot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, if you're a pro, you're practicing all day. Um, but that's what they're doing. They're learning where to place their foot or feet, depending on which one they're using, to kick it where they want it to go. And if you do it in a certain way, you can put the spin on it, like mm-hmm. you're talking about, and you can send it off to the right, to the left, way up in the air. And my favorite ones are when you they kick it towards the goal, and you're thinking, oh, my gosh, it's going to go over. And right at the last second, it drops. And then poof, and it goes. And it goes, yeah. 
Jennifer, what's the thing that – because I know, know when you're doing the research for these books, you know, you start off, you have a, a certain base of knowledge on the subject that you're writing, but then you do the research and you're discovering new things. What's the thing that you discovered researching this book that surprised you the most? Um, so I actually found I, – I, sometimes I'll look at athletes. So I looked up Simone Biles. Mm-hmm. And oh my gosh, the physics behind some of her flips and twists, the math is just unbelievable. And I I know I'm not gonna get this right, but but one of the one of the ones that she does has like two twists and two flips and all of this craziness. So on the internet I found like a um a diagram of all of this and you could see the arrows and all of the math. And there were, there were literally like four different mathematical equations for all of these spins and flips that she does. It's, and then, but when you watch her do it, it's effortless Mm -hmm. and uh, so beautiful and amazing. I love to watch her flip around on the floor. Yeah. And everything, everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Women's, uh, women's gymnastics is just something that is uh, spectacular. And it has always fascinated me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I remember when I was in college, I, I actually tried to do something on the uneven parallel bars. And I walked in a very uneven way for a long time. <laughs> you know, when they spin and they hit that lower bar. It, yeah. It just, I didn't hit it right. I don't think. Uh, yeah. So as a kid, that was, I actually did gymnastics. I started with, um, what we called acrobats, which is like tumbling and I did ballet and tap. And then I tried gymnastics and I was pretty good on the floor routine, but then they put me on the balance beat, Mm. which is only like what, four inches across or six, whatever it is. And I was, I'm looking at them going, okay, I can see it going forward. They're like, okay, now do, do a backflip on this. And I'm like, are you? wait, what? <laughs> you want me to do, to flip backwards, put my hands on this little tiny piece and not hit my head. I don't, I don't think I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's about when I decided, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to do the balance beam. <laughs> That's because you, you, you had this innate knowledge of science and you realized that if your head hit that big <laughs> thick piece of wood at a certain speed, you wouldn't be writing books these days. Uh, probably not. I mean, this is, <laughs> athletes are amazing people, right? They're so dedicated to their sport, and they train so many hours a day. One of my favorite sports to watch in the Olympics is swimming. Mm. Like, I, I, I've been a swimmer since I was seven or eight. Um, not professionally or anything like that. Not even competitively. Um, but I just love to swim. And it's so amazing to watch them go so fast and how they make their bodies streamline. Like they know exactly how to have the right position in the water to make them go faster, which is all physics again. Yeah. Yeah. I I remember one of the, uh, something that really surprised me. And I think it was the first time I made the connection between science and sports was when I was watching, and it was the Olympics, and I was watching, and the the broadcasters were explaining why all the men swimmers were shaving their legs. Because having shaved legs, you know, having those little hairs in your legs actually created drag and slowed you down. Yeah, it does. And I mean, I mean, we're talking like, what, hundreds of a second? I'm not sure if it's tense, but if you've watched Olympic competitions, Sometimes people win by hundredths of a second. Um, and they also, do you know that they were, they typically wear um, two, um, uh, bathing caps? Called? Thank you. <laughs> two bathing caps, huh? Because they put the first one on, then they put the goggles on, then they put the other one on, on top, and they, it's to keep their goggles on. Which makes sense because if you've ever swam fast or competitively, if you lose your goggles, you're you're kind of that's not a good thing, right? Because mm-hmm. now all of a sudden you can't see where you're going. Wow, that's that's wild. You you touched on this earlier, and I just wanted to jump back to it. You, you talked about in in the book. You talk about what food and food science and and mm-hmm. what foods you need, and and I, I'm thinking there are probably different foods that for different sports. 
Sure. I mean, you're usually if you're swimming competitively and you have a coach, the coach will give you ideas. The The question is, do you want to bulk up and have lots of muscle, which if you're a weightlifter, if you're a shot putter, you know, some sports, you need that. If you need to be long and lean, like maybe like a swimmer or a runner, then you're going to eat different foods um, and so forth. You know, the big thing is when you're playing sports, and th- we have this in the book for kids, is to just be aware of your body. And And I know everyone says, you know, play through the pain. Well, make sure you tell your coach and your parents if you have pain, because sometimes the pain is not stuff you should play through. And it's your body's way of saying, hey, you have an injury. This needs to be taken care of. I think that that's the most difficult thing for a competitive athlete to realize. It certainly was for me. Um, I, I, I actually broke my ankle 13 times playing uh, soccer. Didn't realize it most of the time. Yikes. <laughs> Until the last time I broke it, I'm, I'm in the ER, and the doctor said, how many times has he broken this? I go, ah, a couple. And he goes, and he starts counting. All the different places that he saw in the x-ray. But you're right. You know, there, there are some things that you can play through. But there are other things that, you know, that pain is just your body telling you, hey, you got to chill or else you're going to break me. And you could be breaking me. You know, it was really difficult when I was coaching, letting kids know, hey, take a week off now. Heal right. 100% instead of taking a chance of getting a serious injury that's going to put you on the bench for a month or a season. Right. Exactly. And, and, you know, we, so we talk about all that in the book. Um, We cover not every sport, but we try to cover a lot of the different sports and give kids an idea of what's happening. Um, One of the cool ones that I loved is remember I told you we played uh, basketball all Mm -hmm. the time, like every night. So you would get good at learning how to shoot from all the different places around the court. And they're all different angles. Some of them you want your ball to go high and swish in. Some of them you want to bank off the backboard. So we have a lot of these pictures in here. And and it's cool because you don't, when you're doing it, you aren't thinking, oh, I'm doing physics and geometry. Mm-hmm. And if I do this, you just kind of eyeball it. And you're like, if I hit right there then it's going to go in. Mm. You know what I love about about this book and, and the way it's opening up kids and parents' eyes is there are a lot of kids out there who love different sports, but they can't compete at the level that they hope to compete at. Right. Uh, you, you know, the most obvious example is a kid who may be in a wheelchair, and they love football, they love uh, f- soccer, uh, they they would love to be able to get out there and compete, but and, and they they might be able to compete in a wheelchair league, but they you know that's not what they're dreaming of. They're like, oh, I'd love to be in the NBA, but maybe they're not going to be able to play on the court. But maybe their knowledge of science can give them something that they can give to the other players, help them up their game through their knowledge of science, and so they become part of the team. Absolutely. Because, you know, when we think about the sports teams, we think about the athletes themselves, right? But there's a whole huge amount of people behind that, the support teams that help them. We have, we have trainers, we have doctors, uh, we have, you know, the people that bring the water, we have the coaches, different kinds of coaches, you know, like on the, I'm trying to think how many different football coaches are there, <laughs> right? It's like, a coach for I, I every mean, position. I could, Right. Like I couldn't even name them. So, so you can easily be one of those, um, just based and, and you're going to have to learn all about science and physics and all those kinds of things in order to be able to help people, the athletes become better athletes. Did you become more of a fan of a certain sport while you were doing research for the book? Oh, that's a good question. That, that's hard to say because like I said, I've played more. Um, I think the most fun I have researching my favorite sport is still swimming because they're doing some really really cool technology in those with the swimsuits they're they're so cool they're made out of nanotechnology and they now they kind of like suck your body into this streamlined shape almost like like they're trying to be like a shark right 
because hello, wouldn't humans mm-hmm. like to be able to swim as fast as sharks? So I just think that, that it's cool, but the interesting thing is, is when they first did this, you could wear the head to toe swimsuits and they all broke, they broke all the world records. And then everyone was like, wait a minute, should the technology be more than the athlete's performance, right? Or should we back off on it? And I think I like that about the swimming because they've decided, hey, we want technology. Yes, absolutely. We're going to keep moving forward. But we're not going to let it overshadow the athletes um, part of this. Um, so for me, swimming is probably one of my favorite sports. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, before we go, we absolutely want to just acknowledge that Jennifer is also the co-host of an excellent podcast that, that introduces kids and families to STEM. It's called the Solve It For Kids podcast. How are things going at my old home at Solve It For Kids? I know. Well, I miss you partnering with me. We had such a great time, but we're doing great. Um, we have, we're keeping taping. And in the last couple episodes, we've had, um, a NASA jet propulsion lab engineer who worked on the Mars rover Ooh. on. And we have another episode about, we had, um, a physicist who listens to black holes. Hmm. I know, right? You're like, wait, black holes make sounds? Believe it or not, they do. Wow. And is he able to figure out what they're saying? I I guess we have to listen to the show to find out. (laughs) Is he able to figure out what what they're saying? So basically what happens is when they collide, the two Uh black holes collide, there is a sound. And it's like, you know, millions of miles away. Um, But, yeah, it's really cool. And we don't just focus on space. Of course, we've had people on talking about dung beetles and let's see, giraffes and all kinds of things. Um, awesome. But yeah, it's you can listen to us wherever you find podcasts and check out our website, solveitforkids.com. And I'm just, just going to say this. I'm, I'm not the co-host anymore, but you can hear me on all the episodes. Let me know if you figure out how. <laughs> yes, you can. You're there. <laughs> hey, Jennifer, if folks want to find out more about the secret science of sports and all that other subtitle stuff and all your other books, where can they go? Well, the cool thing is, is this book is published by Black Dog and Leventhal. So you can go to their website and they can have all the information. You can find me on jenniferswansonbooks.com and you can order the book from there or you can order it from any uh, major retailer or, or your local bookstore online. Um, or even find it at your library. Yeah, yeah. And we always encourage folks, especially now as we're coming out of the pandemic, Amazon has taken a lot, justifiably, they've done great service. They've had, they have enough of my money. So I will probably go out to my independent bookshop and yep. say, hey, do you have the Secret Science of Sports by Jennifer Swanson? You don't yet? Could you order it for me, please? And I know <laughs> they'll get it there in just a day or two. That would be great. Thanks, Jed. We've had a great time speaking to the author of The Secret Science of Sports, our dean of all things STEM and STEAM, Jennifer Swanson. Hey, Jen, so great to have you back on the show. Thanks for having me, Jen. It's always a delight to be on Reading With Your Kids. Please join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Sheila Mack. She is the author of Bootstraps and Bra Straps. She's here to give us some great parenting tips. We'll also be joined by our buddy, Tony Kolink. Anthony Kolink will be back on the show. Hey, if you are the author of a fantastic children's book, you may be frustrated at how difficult it is to get your book noticed. I mean, there are literally thousands of books published every single month. We have a program that could help. It's, it's helped so many authors so far. It's called Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read Program. Now, if our panel of teachers, uh, parents, and kids believe that your book is worthy of four or five out of five stars, it becomes a certified great read. And with that status comes a whole lot of great tools that can really help your book stand out from the crowd of books, the thousands of books that are published every single month. To learn more, all you need to do is to go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the Authors Click Here button at the top of the page. Scroll on down to Certified Great Reads. want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Chris, want to start by thanking our guest, 
the dean of all things STEM and STEAM, Jennifer Swanson, for being here. Be sure to check out The Secret Science of Sports, perfect book to read during the Olympics. Also want to thank my team, Alejandro Doherty, Fatima Khan, Justina Thompson, Helen Frazier. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. I want to thank Augie the Doggy for having my back here in the studio. Most of all, I want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast.